all love getting gifts. I love getting gifts. I'm sure everyone in here loves getting gifts, whether they're birthday gifts or Christmas gifts or Easter gifts. We love getting gifts. And no one would deny that a gift is a great thing, no matter what it is. Because, well, someone thought enough of us to give us something, whether it's small or large, they thought of us and they gave us a gift. And you know, each and every time we get a gift, there's like a proper response to getting a gift. We all know that the proper response is, thank you. But even more so, another proper response is to use that gift for what it was intended. So if someone gave us, you know, money to go out to dinner for an anniversary, well then the proper response to receiving that gift is to go out to dinner with that money for an anniversary. All gifts have a proper response. Today, on this beautiful, beautiful night at the start of the sacred triduum, we are given two extraordinary gifts by the Lord. Two extraordinary gifts Jesus bestowed upon us 2,000 years ago that night in the upper room at the table with his disciples. Jesus gave us the holy priesthood, and he gave us the holy Eucharist the Holy Priesthood, and the Holy Eucharist. Two beautiful and extraordinary gifts of Jesus Christ that he gave to us at the end of his earthly life. Two gifts that he gave to us to last until the end of time, until his second coming. Two gifts that must elicit a proper response. When we get gifts from others, like I said before, it's usually a thank you and a using it in the proper way. Tonight's gifts, we certainly must thank the Lord for. And we certainly must use in the proper way, but there's something more to these two gifts. These two gifts that we get tonight are intimately connected to what happens tomorrow. These two beautiful gifts are connected to Christ's eternal sacrifice on the cross. Jesus said to his disciples that night, take this and eat it. This is my body given up for you. This is my blood given up for you. He gave us the priesthood and the Eucharist as two gifts connected to the cross. Two gifts of sacrifice that he must elicit from each and every one of us. Sacrifice. Sacrifice. The Holy Priesthood is certainly a beautiful gift, and today we celebrated that gift at the Chrism Mass at the cathedral. And we know that there certainly are sacrifices involved in the priesthood. And if the three priests up here were to live our priesthood to the fullest, then our priesthood would be a pouring out of ourself as a gift to Jesus Christ, a gift back to him, and a gift to all of you. And so that great gift elicits a sacrifice, a pouring out on our behalf for all of you. And the Holy Eucharist, what a great gift. Jesus' actual presence among us. 
Jesus' body and blood, soul and divinity, present to us. A gift that not only we lay eyes on, but a gift that we take into our very person, into our body. But that gift requires of each and every one of us sacrifice. Just as it required of Christ on the cross, it requires us to sacrifice, to pour out our very lives for him. To pour out our very lives in service like we will see a little, a moment, a few short moments from now in the washing of the feet. To give up our own ambitions for him. To give our very will and our entire being to him. To be his servant. And indeed to be one with him, to be completely united with him. Tonight is such a beautiful, beautiful night with two extraordinary, extraordinary gifts. And I beg each and every one of you on behalf of my brother priests here tonight and of all the priests in our diocese and in our world that tonight you will pray for us that we may be holy priests, priests who will pour out our entire lives each and every day in service of the church, in service of each and every one of you. And tonight I also beg you, as you approach the altar, as St. Paul said, as we approach the throne of grace to receive that great and ultimate gift of the Eucharist, I beg you and myself that we would pour out our lives, that we would offer our entire lives to him. Because it is in offering our lives to him, in pouring out our very souls our very beings to him in this great sacrament that we will indeed become one body one spirit in Christ Lord Jesus, and as Father Jim mentioned, the Eucharist was intricately tied to the washing of feet, to pouring out our lives in service. Tonight, for the washing of feet, we'll invite some volunteers who represent just a bit of the diversity of this community, each of us, as varied as our lives are deeply loved by God. If you are to volunteer, and we'll ask for various volunteers, we would ask that you be able to remove one sock and one shoe when we bring you forward and be seated. After your foot is washed, we'd invite you to put your shoe and sock back on and then wait until everyone is, is finished and we'll dismiss you all at the same time. For each of the categories, I would hope that more than one person actually would 
raise their hands, and we'll just call a few volunteers each time. I know, for example, that we have a number of our catechumens preparing for baptism on Holy Saturday night. So would any of our catechumens volunteer? Let me see a few hands from catechumens, wherever you are. I have to wave them because I can't see you in the... We already put you to work, dude. Anybody else? Come on up. Thank you. I'd also look for someone who's been a member of this parish for at least 50 years. You don't have to be giving your age away, but we're going to know at least a bit of a clue. So a volunteer from those who've been here at least 50 years, or a few volunteers. No one? Come on. So Vicki was here since five years before she was born. Yeah. How about someone who is newer to the parish, maybe even in the past six months or years? volunteers among those who would be newer to our community. Here's Ruth, another person of at least 50 years. Who are those who are newest, newer to this community? Let me raise your, raise your hand so I can see you. Come on up. Thank you. And how about uh, one of our boys and girls who is preparing for First Communion? Right on up. Well, it looks like we got more than one. Okay. I love to see our teenagers involved in some. We might have to hold up just two for right now, dude. Okay, come on up. Well, that'll be all the second graders. Well, <laughs> are not. What does the priest do now? Right. We'll, we'll figure something out. I love to see our teenagers at work in so many ways. Annie, come on up. One teenager. And maybe someone who this night carries a deep hurt, a deep significant illness, We had one person who brought our oils forward with that. Who else would come forward to carry some hurt that maybe others would not see? Come on up, please. Certainly. We could bring forward from our community people representing every different walk of life. Those who have lost jobs, those recently married, those who are divorced, those who rarely volunteer for anything. <laughs> or maybe we should have just put on the sprinkler system and got, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> One of the things I love about this parish is how many people get involved again and again in so many beautiful ways. In just a moment, we will wash feet. I invite all of you to come forward to be, go ahead and take off one of your shoes and one of your socks. In some ways, they represent all of us. As Father Jim said, for the incredible gift that we have been given. They also stand as a reminder to us that it is our job, as did Jesus, to wash feet. How beautiful that served the wine and the bread and the sons of the earth how beautiful the feet that walked the long dusty roads and the hill to the cross how beautiful Beautiful, how beautiful. 
So 